Hey guys, Remy here. So a great place to start in the first few days of the new season is to take a look at the kit of parts that Tetrix offers. The kit of parts includes almost everything that you will need to make a basic robot and will give you an understanding of the materials included in the kit. Taking a look at the Tetrix kit of parts will be the first step that any team at FTC will do. So here we go. Alright, so hey guys, now moving on to the actual parts. These are the main building blocks that you will have and you can test with them. You have your various beams, you get two of each beam in the kit of parts. Um, you have your bigger ones for your main frame of your robot and then all the way down to the smaller ones which are the unit ones which you get multiple of, more than two. And these are more for spacing when the bigger ones are more for structural. You also have your flat plates, which can be used for spacing, tying two pieces that are far away. And it also comes with the flat beams, which are like the, the bigger plates, but just cut up to smaller pieces. And you have your L brackets, which are also for securing. These can be used for either tying two things into each other or um, creating a more sturdy build when building up and down. Finally, for the building parts, you also have your standoff posts. These can be applied within the actual beam using spacers, which we'll discuss later, which will actually make it much stronger and less likely to actually bend inwards. And this one can be used the same way, but for different alignments and structures. So those are the building beams. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the wheels. You have two different types of wheels. You have your regular rubber wheel, which is three inches in diameter, and then you have a more special omnidirectional wheel, which has actually a regular wheel base with the plastic around it, but instead of the rubber coating, you actually have rubber wheels that go in different directions. This is great for building an omnidirectional robot, which can actually move in multiple directions, while this one actually has to turn to get to a new position. There are two different sizes of wheels. These are the three inch wheels. There's also the four inch wheels. We recommend that you actually go out and buy the four inch wheels. While these are perfectly fine for your building of your Ranger robot or any basic robot, but however, um, towards competition day or towards building autonomous, you would want to get a bigger wheel so that they would give you more traction and more stability. Uh, the pros and cons of both are obviously the omnidirectional wheel can move in all directions but can be pushed very easily because of these wheels so there's no actual grip while these can withstand a much larger push but can't move in any direction so there's kind of the opposites and you kind of have to pick and choose which one you would want on your chassis. Okay so now we're going to move into the axle keys, nuts, and bolts and spacers. With the kit of parts, you get four different types of axles, keys, or hex keys, whichever one you want to call them. They're four different types, they're four different sizes. They both fit into different types of objects. So we recommend color coding it because they can look quite similar if you're just in a rush and there's no actual tag or identifier on the actual hex key to say which one it is so you'll be spending so much time just trying all different ones when they don't work. So we just recommend four different colors, white, blue, yellow, and red, and uh, red corresponding to the fattest one and white corresponding to the thinnest one. Moving on to the bolts, there are three different types of bolts and one type of nut. The three different types of bolts, there is a longer one with a socket head that fits the red hex key. There is a shorter one with the same socket head, same red hex key fits in here. And then there moves on to the button head, which are the same size as the smaller of the socket heads, but just have that button head so that if you're in a tight space or somewhere where you don't have a lot of room for this cap, when it be, whether it be slides, whether it be something that's moving closely to this, you want to have something that won't catch or grind. What fits this one is a blue hex key and the yellow and white hex keys are for different parts which we'll cover later. You also have your nuts, um, all three screws or bolts fit um, this one nut and they can all be screwed on. And for your spacers, you have two different types of spacers. You have your fatter one or longer one and your smaller one. This one is three times bigger 
approximately than this one. And this, these can be used for spacing out screws or when attaching them to beams or for anything that you think needs a spacer that has this big of a diameter. And so that's screws and bolts. Okay, so moving on to your servos and your motors. So basically, first off, the motor, it's much more powerful than a servo. It can get the job done when it comes to driving wheels, driving heavy attachments, or something that needs a lot of power behind it. Simply, uh, there's a wire that comes with it, or you have to buy it separately, but it simply just attaches in the back. This wire sends power and also a signal whether to turn on or off to the motor and then it also comes with a motor mount which just easily fits over the motor and then can securely clamp down to a beam. So now you have your servos which are much less powerful than your motor but are more precise in the fact that they can actually turn to a specific point and can then be attached to different beams and such with this adapter. When it comes to wires with servos, there are two different types. There's the Y wire, which actually sends the same signal to do two different servos if you have two different servos doing the same exact thing. And then there's also your servo extender. Since this is somewhat of a limited wire, you can attach um, a servo extender, which greatly increases the length of the servo. And that's your servos and motors. Okay, so now we're going to go over flat beams, beams, and tubes. Basically, what flat beams are good for are really great for um, creating light attachments, such as scissor lifts, um, as it, you can see here, or other attachments that just need these light materials, but need them to be very long and stable. There is also a piece that's an L of a flat beam. It's just basically two flat beams just put in an L formation. Um, this is great for securing different things and for needing something to be stronger. And now moving on to the tubes, what they're good for are just like make hold flag holders or um, knocking over things by just putting it on an attachment and then swinging it forward so that it can knock over things. Um, there are also tube fillers which are actually just fit inside of the tube and can act as a weight or anything else you need it to act as. And so that's tubes and beams. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the battery and battery charger. So basically, this is a 12 volt battery. Even though it says 12 volt, it does actually put out about 13 volts when it's fully charged. Always have an extra one at hand, um, an extra charge one at hand so that you can swap it out on your robot if you feel that your robot's not performing as it could be. Also be sure to label um, your team name on the battery because all these batteries look exactly the same and you wouldn't really want yours to be lost because these are pretty expensive. The kit also comes with a battery charger. If you have more than um, two batteries, it's suggested that you actually buy more than one charger so that you can charge them at the same time. The charger is very simple. It has one end, which is an adapter to the battery where you can actually easily just plug it in. And then there's also a switch between 0.9 amps and 1.8 amps. Always be sure to leave it on the 0.9 amps so that it doesn't overheat and then simply it just plugs into the wall. And so that's your battery and battery charger. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the collars and your axles. So you have this axle, which comes in two different sizes, the smaller size and a much larger size, which is about three times this size. For the collars, there are five different types of collars that fit into this one, and there is another hub that actually fits onto a motor. So we'll go over the hubs first. So there are two different types of hubs. There is your axle hub and your motor hub. There's a very slight difference between these two. One actually has, or the motor hub actually has, a larger diameter than the axle hub, and this is just a very good thing just to look out for when you're selecting which one you want. When you want actually an axle hub and you choose a motor hub by accident, you may encounter problems when you install this piece. So how it works is very simple. You just fit the piece that you want to fit through, well this would be an axle since this is an axle hub, right into the hole in the middle. And to 
clamp it down or to make it stop moving, you just simply have the set screw and you take your yellow hex key, which is your second largest hex key, and you simply just insert it in the set screw and then just tighten until you can't tighten anymore. And then that stops the axle from moving and acts as a clamp for it. This piece then can install onto a beam and can just go through that center hole and then be screwed down with these screw holes. So that is your hub. The same thing applies to the motor hub where you actually have the motor fit through here instead and then this can actually be attached to whatever you want to have turn, like such as a wheel or such as another attachment. And so those are your hubs. Moving on to the other pieces or collars, your bronze bushing, which can actually fit through the unit piece or the beam and can actually make the space fit an axle perfectly so that when you have movement to such a piece, you can have it spin or you can have the axle spin through the piece. If you didn't have the bronze bushings, the space in the center would be too wide so that it wouldn't actually be a perfect fit and it would have room to move, which is not something that you really want. And to stop it from moving back and forth, use this axle collar, which is the much smaller one. You slide it on and then you use your white hex key, which is your smallest hex key. Just turn the set screw until it can't turn anymore. This axle can't move in this direction. It still can, however, turn move in this direction. Just to, to stop that from happening, you simply just put on another axle collar on this side. Now we move on to the axle clamp. This is the actual clamp that you have where the axle fits in and what you do to basically stop its movement from moving back and forth is you just insert a simple screw into the clamp and then you just keep on turning until this piece just tightens all the way so that it stops the axle from moving back and forth. Screw this down with the red hex key. This one isn't labeled but if it were it would be red and this is the largest hex key that you have. And our last clamp would be the spacer clamp. They are supposed to, however, be able to connect to distances that are far away and you could utilize this to stop it from moving. If this axle doesn't actually reach this piece, you could utilize this piece and then just use a set of collars to stop it from moving back and forth. And so those are your collars and your axles. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the 90 degree angle brackets and the flat brackets. So with your 90 degree angle brackets, these are great for supporting beams that go just straight upwards and also supporting beams that are at a 90 degree angle to each other. With your flat beams, these are great for attaching things that are three units away from each other or from simply just putting or needing more space in between two beams. So these two pieces are great pieces to have. Okay, now moving on to the items that actually hold the servo. You have three different types. You have the single servo bracket, the double servo bracket, and the pivot bracket. These each have their different purposes. This single bracket is good for just installing single servos, just to do any job that you would want a servo to do, whether it be turning, whether it be moving something, or anything really. With your double servo bracket, this is actually combining the power of two servos so that it makes the actual servo much stronger and putting it out, putting more torque, but also having the same power and having it be very reliable. And then there is this last one, which is a pivot servo block, which actually has a different fitting and you can actually install it as such and then have it turn. Also another handy tip when in actually installing this, you should put through the screws and attach to the beam before you attach this part so that it would actually make it much more easier when installing this thing. And so that's the servo bracket. Okay, so now moving on to the NXT hard connectors. These transform from the Tetrix pieces to Lego pieces, which we will see in the next video when we actually build a Ranger robot. But for now, this piece is very versatile. You can put it almost anywhere, a regular um, Tetrix piece can attach to and you just simply screw it down and then insert your Lego piece so that you can attach this to the NXT brick and then your NXT brick can then be mounted onto your robot through these. 
So this is an anti-static electricity bag. What it basically does is protects the controller inside from any static elements. It's very important to keep this static free or from any getting any charge from static electricity because it can make it malfunction and do weird sorts of stuff that you don't want it to do. And so this is the actual DC motor controller. There are two types of controllers. There is the DC motor controller and the servo controller. The only difference is that instead of these encoder motor and second motor ports, they have servo ports. On there, there is the battery ports, the encoder ports, the motor ports, and the NXT wire ports. And the NXT wire ports just connects NXT wires either from other controllers or from the Mindstorm brick itself, which sends instructions to this controller to do tasks and make the whatever's plugged into it operate. On the front, you have the battery ports. Simply, there is a line or some wires, the plus and minus wires, the red and black wires that lead from the battery to each controller, and you can daisy chain the controller. We will go over daisy chaining more in the Ranger Robot video. You have the encoders, which actually we'll go over and how to program them. That hook on to the motor and you have the motor ports themselves. Um, you have two motor ports um, to hook up two motors. You have the positive and negative ports for the first motor and the positive and negative ports for the second motor and you just simply plug in the black and red wires that are attached to the end of the motor itself. A tip for this, if you have two motors doing the exact same thing like the servo Y adapter, you can actually just double plug. Say you have two motors on the left side of your robot, they never differentiate. You can plug actually both of them into a single motor port, which could be motor two. And then when you program it, you just have to program one motor and it'll send whatever signal to one motor also to the other to make it operate. And so this is your controllers. So these are your two gears that come with the kit of parts. You have your 40 tooth gear and your 80 tooth gear. They actually sell a 120 tooth gear, which doesn't come with this kit of parts, but is really good for constructing gear ratios. The, all of these gears are great for constructing gear ratios, which we will cover in another video. And those are just basically great for designing different types of chassis, whether it be a very high speed chassis or very torqued up chassis or a very powerful chassis. Zip ties, these things are great for fastening up to other things. If you don't know how to use them, you just simply just put one of the ends of the zip tie into the zip tie and then just keep on pulling until you hear that clicking sound. That means that it's locking and that you can't actually pull back anymore. And this is great for fastening wires, fastening anything that's loose and just doing some tidying up. So this is with the actual standoff pose built into the beam. So now as you can see it's much stronger. You can't actually bend this beam inwards like you could with another beam with a simple pair of pliers. And this is just to make it much more stronger having four sides. And so this is great for any attachments that put a lot of force on its pieces or anything that might be damaged um, when slamming into like say walls. This would be great on your bumper so that your pieces won't bend inwards. Wire leads to your first controller as well and plugs into the positive side, this one to the negative side. And this actually acts as an effective um, controller of whether current can pass from the battery to your controllers or not. And that's the on off switch. So that's the kit of parts, and if you like what you saw here, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.